So one of the pinch points that I've mentioned with Linux is CAD. And right out of the gate, because I know somebody's going to make the comment, let's just get this out of the way. All right, we're just we're just going to go ahead. We're going to donate some money to FreeCAD because here's the thing. I don't like FreeCAD. FreeCAD kind of stinks, but I'm not a FreeCAD hater. And I just want you to know that I don't hate the concept of FreeCAD. I just don't like using the program. There you go. I do not hate FreeCAD. I just want them to get better. And I do encourage everybody out there, give them five bucks, give them 10 bucks, give them a dollar. I don't care what it is. Let's help make FreeCAD better. And yeah, some people will mention Onshape, but my problems that are that it's purely cloud-based, so it only works through a web browser, which poses some problems I'm not going to get into right now. But the bigger problem for me is that the free plan comes with public storage. And if you scroll down, you'll see uh, all Onshape documents are accessible to the public. And I'm not okay with that, which means I don't necessarily hate Onshape either, but it just doesn't work for what I want my CAD to be. Now that that's out of the way, we can get on to the real point of this video, which is testing out Autodesk Fusion 360 on Linux and trying to get it to work. And the first thing we can do is just try to search Linux Fusion 360. And uh, this is the project that I've been using. This is a repository from Steve Zabka, and uh, it's a way to use Wine to get Fusion 360 running. Now, as it currently sits, this doesn't just work with his install script. The way I got this thing to work is if you go into issues and right down here, it says login web page response doesn't trigger login with Fusion 360 as a bug. And it has a whole bunch of comments. And it is in this comment chain where I found the solution to my problems. So if we scroll down, there's a comment from a couple weeks ago from Zakuten, and this actually lists step by step all the things you need to do to get Fusion 360 working and to fix all the current bugs. It's a bit of a hassle. That said, as you can see, it does work mostly. Now, the reason I say mostly is because this interface uh, has some trouble. You can see as I drag this thing around that menu trying to chase the screen, um, that's just kind of, that's, that's just how things are. Uh, there are some graphical oddities running this thing on wine. Number one for me is the scaling of everything cannot be adjusted. That little menu, by the way, it just floats over everything. And so it, it's just kind of weird. There are just little graphical issues on the scaling. You'll see if I go into the uh, the wine config, I ought to be able to change the graphics scaling with the screen resolution, but it doesn't seem to do anything. There's also some UI scaling uh, settings within Fusion 360 itself that doesn't really seem to do anything either. Now, if I try to actually make something, you'll see it, it does work, but it's a little laggy. Uh, the snapping doesn't seem to to want to work very well. As I, as I mouse close to things, you know, again, just the UI scale, I think, messes up the snapping where it, it doesn't like to grab onto things very well. So that seems to be kind of an issue, like trying to get things to snap correctly on distances or points seems to have some issues. But other than that, mostly things do seem to work. Its performance is OK. Um, I would say it's good enough, uh, except for the UI scaling does cause some problems. The other thing that I've had some problems with is like if I click on this bottom edge and then I want to chamfer it. Uh, yeah, where's the chamfer? It didn't pop up, right? Um, now, what's weird with this is that there are times that I can get the chamfer to work and sometimes they don't. Again, I actually think this is something wrong with the UI. I don't think it's something broken because if I take the chamfer and I modify it so that it is pinned to the toolbar up here and then click on that, lo and behold, the chamfer pops up and I can put a chamfer on this edge. No problem. So it seems like stuff works. It's just a UI problem and the performance is eh, good enough. Honestly, this is kind of usable, um, even if I would say it's, its UI is buggy right now. But let's look at the next method.
So for the next thing, I was like, okay, well, virtual machines. And so I've got virtual machine manager and KVM set up and I've got an install of Windows 10. Now this is a stripped down version called Tiny 10. I am using the VertIO drivers on everything to try to get it to be uh, more performant. So I've got the display set up as a 1440 screen. And if I fire up Fusion, everything seems to run really well. So here you can see the UI scaling is much improved. Things are, are far easier to see on the screen. So let's uh, go ahead and fire up a sketch. And here you start to see the problem. As I start mousing, you'll see this thing is not very good. Um, it is the graphics performance that really drags this whole thing down. Now, everything seems to work fine. And so this would work if I could get the graphics to be improved. And so I looked into that. If I go back into the machine settings in the display, there is a setting for OpenGL and it does see my graphics card. So there are ways with VertIO graphics to get this thing to work. So I come down here, apply that. I need to switch this to Vertio Graphics, turn on 3D acceleration. All right, so we're gonna start this virtual machine and here's the problem. What I found out is that this doesn't work for Windows. <laughs> it would work if my virtual machine was trying to run Linux, but the, uh, the virtual GPU support is not there currently with this setup for Windows. Okay, so is that it? Well, no, I tried a different virtual machine and that is VirtualBox. Now VirtualBox is from Oracle, so it wasn't my first choice because I, I, you know, I wanted to use the built-in tools, things that are potentially more open and less controlled by a corporation because hey, isn't that kind of the philosophy here? Um, so once again, I installed a Windows Tiny 10 install. For the display, I did enable 3D acceleration because that's what I found in my searching was that VirtualBox Box had a way to enable 3D acceleration. So maybe this will be the ticket. Go ahead and start up our virtual machine and see how that goes. So here we are in our virtualized Windows 10. And once again, let's fire up Fusion. Okay, so first impression whenever I got this thing up and running is, well, it looks like things are working. As far as the display scaling, all looks good. Everything's rendering in the correct sizes. So indeed, you know, if I start building a sketch, this thing way, way, way more responsive. And, you know, all of this seems like, hey, maybe, maybe this is pretty good. And then I tried to open one of my existing files. And when I open this data panel, this happened. This thing is either upside down or transposed. Uh, so that's kind of a problem. Other things, whenever I try to close the panel, like I can't hit that X, I have to come up here and do the hide the panel. And once I started sketching, I mean, things do work pretty well in here. Um, the snapping and all the interface are much faster than what they were in the other virtual machine. So let me finish this design really quick. And uh, here's where things kind of get weird with the display. You'll see if you do notice how this these lines aren't solid, they get kind of some graphical issues, but the responsiveness of this system graphically is just way better. So it seems that the GPU is mostly working, but some of the interfaces and again, some of the panels don't seem to work well. If I go into McMaster car here, you'll see everything's upside down and that's kind of weird. And if I mouse over stuff, it, random things, sometimes they'll highlight, sometimes they won't. Is it usable? Maybe, but there seems to be some weird issues graphically. Now, one way around the problem of, you know, this data panel not working is I can open things from a regular file browser. So just to show how well the graphics do work as far as, you know, the performance aspect, um, here's a, a moderately complicated little layout with multiple different components being pulled in. Um, and things are pretty snappy, certainly good enough, but like the rendering lines being all weird is kind of odd. And then the last thing I noticed is when I go to shut this thing down, the menus over here, they don't, they don't work right. So it seems like the 3D acceleration in VirtualBox, it's not working perfectly. So that's kind of the issue is, yeah, it does seem to give you better graphics acceleration, but it introduces a whole bunch of other kind of display oriented 
bugs. So uh, to wrap this up, where does it leave us? There is no great solution that I've found yet. Now, I'm certain that there are probably other people that have had better luck with some of these things. You know, and one thing I would say is with uh, the uh, the KVM system, I have seen that there are ways to do some GPU pass through stuff. So if you go out to the, the Arch Wiki, you can find some stuff about, you know, graphics acceleration on Kimu and KVM. Um, and there's really seems to be like a few different ways to do this. Like you can like just have a whole separate GPU dedicated uh, to the virtual machine, but that's not something I can do because I've only got one GPU. And you can see this PCI pass-through only works for dual graphics cards. There are some other ways to do it that people have found, and, and they maybe work, but right now they're more advanced than I'm going to be able to pull off quickly. And they certainly aren't easy. And so that's kind of my conclusion uh, of these three methods, at least. You know, trying to do it on one has some bugs trying to do it through virtual machines well kvm works really well but the graphics performance isn't good enough going through virtual box has good graphics performance but it introduces a bunch of bugs too so i think right now if i'm going to be running fusion i'm going to just be doing the the local wine version for now or frankly the best case is probably just a dual boot into windows still i wish that weren't the case but there's too many bugs if, you, if you're trying to do anything important in fusion right now i just i could not recommend anything other than you need to be booting up into windows because right now it looks like native windows is the only way to run fusion 360 without what i see as potential for data loss broken features and potential, you know, plugins and, and other types of edge case uses just, just working, right? If you want that stuff to work, you're going to have to use it in Windows right now. You know, I, I will say that the uh, the Wine version here, it, it does probably perform the best as far as, you know, overall graphics performance. I do think some of the wonkiness is more visual than anything. I mean, the very small menus, that, that's a problem, but it's not something that can't be worked around. I, I've been able to do things. And, you know, this morning when I needed to make a little model, I did that on this wine version and it worked fine and I exported it and already have that thing 3D printed. It's just that little thing that I was making earlier was just a little stand for an espresso portafilter, nothing special. And, and you know, knocking out something quick like that, I, I think Fusion 360 uh, would work pretty well in this wine version, although it's not the easiest thing to get up and running. The virtual machines I want to work, but they just don't offer the performance or, um, you know, there's just too many bugs currently. So that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, if you have any feedback, comments, or suggestions, as always, feel free to leave them down below in a comment. Otherwise, you know, I appreciate your time. Thanks.